Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be doing another likes and dislikes on the all new 2024 Hyundai Kona. This time we're going to be taking a look at the electric variant, which is one of the most affordable electric vehicles that can do over 250 miles of range on a single charge. Now, if you've come across this video and are more interested in the gasoline powered versions of this all new Kona, make sure to check out those dedicated videos here on the channel, including the likes and dislikes with the 1.6 liter turbo limited. Now, this one is an SEL or mid trim level in the Kona electric lineup, the cheapest entry level version with the largest battery pack available, just under 65 kilowatt hours of total usable capacity. Uh, but like I said, I've had a ton of time here behind the wheel of this exact version, taking about 400 miles to and from Chicago and I've also done a charging test in a different Kona Electric, so I kind of know the ins and outs of the Kona platform in general by now, and I think it is going to be a very popular mass market electric vehicle given the current pricing on this particular vehicle, including the $7,500 rebate direct from Hyundai, as this does not qualify for the federal EV tax credit as of this moment or this model year. And uh, I think with the incentives and stuff, this makes it a $30,000 EV that can do over 250 miles on a one single charge. Uh, doesn't have that great of DC fast charging capabilities as we saw in my charging test, but I think that can be overcome by its price point, you know, how it drives, its feature set, et cetera. So let's go through all of the likes and dislikes I have here with the uh, SEL trim level or just the Kona Electric in general. So my first like with the Kona EV is going to be the fact that it has not only battery preconditioning, but it has automatic as well as manual preconditioning via the infotainment system. So Hyundai has had battery preconditioning for several years now in the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 vehicles, but that had to be enabled automatically by setting a destination with the built-in navigation system to a DC fast charger. Now, there were a few other criteria to it as you can only be so many miles away or have you know an estimated time of arrival of a certain time. Uh, but here in the 2024 Kona EV vehicles, not only can you do that with the built-in navigation as well, but you can select it manually by hitting activate under the dedicated battery preconditioning pages under the electric vehicle menu. So I believe this to be rolling out to the 2025 Ionic 5, as well as the updated Ionic 6 whenever that arrives with this new next generation software and hardware for the head unit. Uh, but I think that is fantastic that Hyundai has finally allowed you to manually precondition the battery pack for an optimal charge or a quicker DC fast charger session. Um, it even gives you a little status indicator in terms of low, suitable, and I believe a high temperature rating, uh, which is kind of just a, a numeric value that Hyundai assigns to this little indicator on the page here. But um, essentially it will allow you to tell whether the battery is up to temperature enough for a you know, quick or optimal DC fast charger session. And if not, it will state so here on the screen. So just like the fact that Hyundai has enabled not only the automatic preconditioning function, but also the manual as well. Now, my second like here with this Kona EV is going to be the next generation CCNC uh, infotainment, as well as the technology behind the scenes. So not only has Hyundai updated the hardware, which powers the built-in screens and all of the technology inside this vehicle, but they've also rolled out a new software or UI theme. And I think personally, it is a huge upgrade versus the previous generation or the current generation in some Hyundai vehicles that haven't received this new software quite yet. I think the UI is better, easier to use, easier to read, everything like that. It allows you more customization on the actual infotainment system itself. Um, the EV pages appear to be much more user friendly. And as you can see here, I pulled up the uh, state of charge with the estimated range, everything like that. And overall, I just think it integrates way better with not only the smart features within the Blue Link app, it also integrates just easier with the user and the interface and you know, the communication between you and the, the, the software itself. I think it is overall very, very easy to use and a huge upgrade over the previous generation technology and UI. So my third like here with the Kona EV has to do with its EV first platform, which it was designed around, but also pertains to the gasoline variants as well, has to do with the cabin design as well as the overall interior ergonomics. So inside of the cabin of the Kona, you're gonna to find tons of hard touch buttons. In fact, everything inside of the vehicle is a hard touch button, which I appreciate over that of some of the other Hyundai vehicles and from other manufacturers as well that use touch capacitive buttons. I think hard touch buttons are the way to go. And in addition to this, there is zero gloss black plastic. So uh, between those two things alone, you've won me over, but the overall interior space inside of not only the electric version, but also the gasoline version of the Kona is just fantastic. 
You have tons of room from the driver or front passenger seating position. The center console is extremely low inside the vehicle, uh, which is part of the EV first nature, which this vehicle was designed around. So it's extremely low, has tons of room between you and the front occupant. Uh, the technology, the screens are super large. Everything is easy to reach and easy to get to. Uh, they've relocated the shift by wire shifter onto the actual steering column itself. Um, the only small complaint I have with the interior overall design and layout is some of the material usage, uh, specifically on the door panel. I think they could spruce these door panels up quite a bit, make them a little bit softer in terms of some of the uh, materials, specifically here on this SEL trim, which does have a hard touch plastic armrest. I think that is just terrible. Um, but if you know, put a padded armrest here, spruce it up in terms of the color and design just a little bit. And I think you've got a complete winner here on the interior of this vehicle. So outside of just some minor material gripes on the interior, I think the Kona uh, EV and the gasoline version are fantastic in this subcompact space of SUV. Now, along with the interior space, my fourth like has to do with the interior volume and noise levels when driving out on the interstate. As we know, I took this vehicle up to Chicago at speeds of over 70 miles an hour for a couple hours at a time. And the interior you know, volume levels was extremely quiet and much quieter than one would expect from a vehicle in this segment price point and class. Um, I think this is a massive improvement over the previous generation Kona, which as we know was extremely small, pretty cramped on the interior and definitely not as quiet as this particular vehicle here. Now, I think the interior volume might be a hair quieter here with the electric version. Uh, that might have to do with the tire choice. It could have to do with the uh, battery pack underneath the vehicle as you're not getting uh, you know, all that noise coming up from the roadway in which you're traveling on. But overall, I think both the gasoline variant and the electric are gonna be very, very quiet. A pleasure to drive out on the interstate and a huge improvement. Now my fifth like here with the Kona Electric has to do with the fact that it actually does have a front trunk. Now, unfortunately, just like the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6, it's not going to be that big. Um, now, this is a front wheel drive or a front motor EV, so it's somewhat understandable the fact that they don't have a ton of room beneath the actual storage compartment to create a deeper or a, a bigger front trunk in general. But actually, if I had to look at the specs and just by you know gauging by the eye, I think this is actually just a fraction bigger than that of the five or the six of Ionic. So I think this is just a smidge bigger than those vehicles, believe it or not. Includes an LED light at the front, just like those for illumination at night. Um, but I think this is a plus that it includes the front trunk, even if you're only using this to store the um, you know, level one or level two EVSC equipment to this vehicle. You can definitely put that underneath the hood and you know, keep that out of the interior space or all the cargo area, uh, which you do have plenty of which in the hatch or cargo underneath the floor. So uh, I think that's just a win for me is the fact that it has a front trunk at all and it might be the biggest out of any electric vehicle that Hyundai has produced or is currently producing thus far. Now my six like with the Kona Electric has to do with the charging port location. Now, just like that of the last generation Kona EV, you charge it in the nose or the very front of the vehicle. And again, that's unchanged for the most part for this next generation. Now, this is a, ultimately a personal preference type of thing. The Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 charge in the passenger rear, uh, where this is completely different at the very front. Now, I think the front has a few advantages. Number one, you're gonna be pulling into your DC fast charging stall, so you never have to back in like the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6. So you simply pull in and then back out once you are ready to leave with the vehicle. Uh, but all of the same status indicator lights are found here on this vehicle, including the four pixel lights, uh, which go by 25% increments in your current state of charge of the battery pack. Like I said, it supports level one, level two, and level three charging, so it does support DC fast charging up to about 100 kilowatts, which I know is substantially slower than that of the Ionic 5 or Ionic 6, but this is a 400 volt architecture. Anyways, uh, I like the charging port location up in the nose. Now my seventh and final like here with the Kona Electric has to do with its powertrain and power output. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the most powerful version in terms of horsepower that Hyundai currently produces, given the Kona N or the high performance variant of the last generation did not make a return for this next generation. So this puts out 201 horsepower, which is just a couple more horsepower versus the 1.6 liter turbo, but it loses a couple pound feet of torque versus the 1.6. So uh, it's a little bit of a trade off there, but in terms of horsepower, this is the most powerful version of the Kona that you could currently purchase. And I think combined with the electric output, you know, of all electric vehicles, the instant torque, 
um, you know, the lack of a shift point within the transmission, all of that makes for it a pleasurable driving experience. And I think that is one of the reasons why I really do like the Kona Electric versus the gasoline counterparts. Now the electric shares the same multi-link independent rear suspension versus the N-Line or the Limited with the 1.6 liter turbo. Likely has different damper tuning for the extra or additional weight of the battery pack and the electric motor setup, everything like that. But overall, the platform was designed around an electric Kona first and then retrofitted with the gasoline engine and other parts later. So. Um, I think for that reason, the Kona Electric drives fantastic. Like I said, it's quiet on the interior, has good handling, has the center of gravity is relatively low with the battery pack the way it is. Um, and I think all that adds up for a very nice uh, driving experience. So that's gonna do it here for my likes with the Kona Electric. Now let's go ahead and dive into my dislikes. Now my first one specifically has to do with the stereo system on the SC and SCL trim levels for the electric or the base stereo system in the gasoline versions. Now this is a six speaker standard audio system. So it has a set of tweeters up on the A pillar, a set of mid woofers here in the door panels in both the first and the second row. And of course the Bose system adds an additional subwoofer in the trunk and I believe a center channel in the dashboard. Now anyways, when you look at the standard six speaker audio system from Hyundai over the years, typically they are not overly great. Now, of course you can tweak them on the EQ as far as the output, you know, go into your settings. Uh, go into sound. And here you can go ahead and change the position, you know, forward and back, left and right. And then you have all of your tone adjustments for treble, mid range, and bass. Now, the Bose in this next generation is certainly an upgrade versus the premium system offered in the past or the last generation. So I applaud Hyundai for that. Sounds actually pretty reasonable. Uh, but in terms of the standard six speaker, I think it is, you know, just barely adequate for a vehicle like this. Uh, but as a whole, six speaker system is, you know, passable, but uh, certainly not the best out there. Now my second like here with the Kona Electric's interior has to do with the door panels. Now I did just mention that with the overall interior ergonomics, uh, but as a whole, this is one of the dislikes that I had not only for the gasoline variant, such as that one up there, but also the electric. Now in the higher trims, such as the N-Line and the Limited Gas or the Limited Electric, this section right here will be padded in soft touch. But here in the lesser SE and SEL trims, this is hard touch plastic. So the entire door panel is not only the exact same color, including the buttons for the windows and mirror controls, but it is also hard touch plastic. Now I think as a whole, this is just you know a downfall of being a cheaper vehicle within Hyundai's lineup. But knowing them in the past, they've offered soft touch materials on some of their lesser expensive vehicles. So I think this is just an oversight by them. I think it's something that is easily remediable in uh, not only a model year change, but also a refresh down the road. Uh, but I would like to see this at a minimum be soft touch across the board and would like to see a little bit of a different color differentiation, both in the black interior option and this gray interior. Now my third dislike with the Kona EV has to do with the charging speed available with this vehicle. Now Hyundai did improve this over the previous generation Kona Electric. I believe it's up about 30 kilowatts of total peak speed. Hyundai says this vehicle is good for about 100 kilowatts under ideal conditions with a level three DC fast charger. And I believe the previous generation Kona Electric topped out at the 70, 75 kilowatts, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong, but I did do a charging test with a different 2024 Kona Electric here on the channel. And even though the battery was not at an ideal optimum temperature, I was only able to achieve a 71 kilowatt peak charging speed right at the beginning of the charging session around 10% state of charge. And after that, I was un able to even reach 70 again in the entire charge curve. Now, of course, EVs like this do derate at around 75 to 80% state of charge. And this vehicle did just that, went down to about you know 25 kilowatts or so. But overall, I think the uh, peak speeds available with this vehicle is not poor, but I would have to see the ideal charging session or the ideal charging curve to make an overall opinion of this vehicle. A uh, Hyundai says 10 to 80% state of charge happens in about 43 minutes under ideal situations. In my test with the other Kona EV I had on the channel, it was about 58 minutes of total charge time to do that same 10 to 80%. So I think that is a negative of a vehicle like this, but again, it is something you can overlook. If you're not doing a lot of DC fast charging, if you're charging at home on a level two charger, this does support 48 amp or about 11 kilowatts level two charging, which is more than adequate for a vehicle like this and kind of the average these days for level two charging. 
Uh, so as a whole, I don't think that's a huge negative, but it is something to be worried about if you're doing a long distance trip, uh, if you're doing frequent interstate road trips where you're doing a lot of level three charging, this will add substantial time to your travels where unlike the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, which are 800 volt EVs, I uh, do it in a much, much quicker time frame around the 20 minute mark or so. Now my fourth dislike here with the Kona Electric also pertains to the gasoline variant of this vehicle and that has to do with the open center console design. Now, I'm not the only one who has noted this in either reviews or commented on my videos, uh, but people don't seem to be too much of a fan of this. Now, essentially, Hyundai has made this entire section open here from the front, so this tray is removable, and then you can see all of the additional storage space inside. But when the center armrest lid is closed in your normal usage position, as you can see, there is a huge opening here at the front, and then you can remove that divider to have a more seamless uh, experience for those longer items you may have in there. But I think most people out there would prefer a little bit of additional privacy for the center console, have this simply blocked off. And that is again, something they could likely do very easily in a revision. Uh, even one of those soft retractable covers would be very neat to integrate in here somehow. I'm uh, not sure if that's possible with this angle of everything, but overall, I think that is just, again, a small negative. It forces you to use the glove box over there if you're looking for concealed storage, as this is somewhat visible at the front of the vehicle, uh, depending on which angle you are looking at it. Now, my fifth and final dislike here with the Kona Electric has to do with the key fob. Now, Hyundai has started rolling out this key fob across pretty much every new or refresh model in the lineup, and the Kona Electric is no different. Now, what's cool about it is it is the Hyundai logo when you turn the key fob sideways. So there you can see the H in the center and then all of the buttons surround the actual key fob. But there are so many negatives to the key fob, it far outweighs uh, the small positive aspect of just having the Hyundai logo in your pocket. So the first one is the physical size of this key fob is sort of like an egg shape, and it's not only thicker than the outgoing or other proximity key fobs which Hyundai has used, but it's just, you know, it feels chintzy, it's plasticky, it feels like an Alibaba key fob. I think this is terrible. And then the other negative aspect besides the build quality and the overall physical size of it is the fact that the metal key that you use to enter the vehicle if the 12 volt battery is dead on the front door handle is the fact that it cannot integrate inside of the actual key fob, so it's going to be mounted separately on the keychain. Now, between those two things, I think that is just a far uh, inferior key fob versus the outgoing ones where it was nicely integrated inside of the key fob. It was a smaller footprint. I think the buttons and overall design looked of a higher quality. So uh, hopefully Hyundai listens to not only customer consumer feedback, but also feedback from journalists out there like myself uh, that the key fob I think needs to be revised. It needs to have the metal key integrated inside of it so you can simply slide it out if the uh, 12 volt battery dies and so you can e have easier access inside the vehicle. But uh, as a whole, I think the key fob just feels chintzy. It's too large and unfortunately does not integrate the metal key inside of it. So that's gonna do it here for my likes and dislikes of the all new 2024 Kona Electric. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave your likes and dislikes of the 2024 Kona Electric down in the comment section below. If you've either test drove one or just spent a little bit of time hands on with one um, or just even the gasoline counterpart, a lot of those do apply to the electric variant as well given the body and overall structure is quite similar. So. Uh, I think the Kona Electric is still gonna be a very, very popular electric vehicle and overall vehicle for Hyundai in terms of the price point um, and the current rebates that they're offering on this vehicle. Like I said, the one behind me is heavily discounted and comes in right around $30,000 after all those discounts are applied. And I think the Kona Electric in the first generation was a relatively lower volume vehicle. Obviously it wasn't sold across every uh, all 50 states. So this is actually the first Kona Electric where Hyundai sold this nationwide to my knowledge. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if this does a higher volume, not only due to the availability of it, but also the price point and the features and options that you're getting for that, you know, mid upper $30,000 price point, depending on how you want to look at it before or after discounts, et cetera. So uh, certainly like the overall design, not exactly sure if I would pick Neoteric Yellow as my color. I really do like the Meta Blue Pearl that I saw at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show. I think that is my favorite color. And that is also a Kona EV exclusive color. So let me know all of your comments down in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate the continued support and hope to see you guys in the next one.